So you're in the market for a new audio interface and you're looking at some great options from Audient. You've got the Evo 4 and you've got the Audient ID4 Mark II. Now these are about $70 between these two as far as price, but this coming in at about $200, this coming in at $129, but which one is best for you? So what I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to try and paint a very accurate picture of who these devices are for. As I'm going to spoil this, not every matchup is going to be Godzilla versus King Kong where there's a definitive winner. Um, each device Device is suited to a specific type of workflow. So I'm going to try and paint a picture of who it's best suited for, whether the Evo 4 or the ID4 Mark II, and we'll see if we can get you guys set up with the right interface. It's the Granite Geek Show. So breaking down the two of these interfaces, we can begin to paint a picture of which interface best fits which style of use. So starting off with the cheapest of the bunch, the Audient Evo 4. Now after over a month of testing, I can say this is a sturdy, solidly built little guy with a ton of features and decent sound quality. Although right off the bat, I will tell you that the Audient ID4 is in another league in terms of sound quality. Now if you're thinking you've already heard enough and are ready to click off, I would advise you to hang on for just a second as the Evo 4 is boasting two XLR inputs, which is fantastic for podcasting situations or anytime you'd need multiple condenser microphones. It's also got a more mobile friendly build with buttons seated nicely at the top and a kind of rectangular build that easily fits into a bag, etc. These two XLR inputs are in addition to the instrument in giving it a total of three inputs which if you go up to a $200 ID4, you're stuck with two inputs. So that's something to consider. And also what I really like about this interface is its ease of use with the one knob. Now what's not to be underestimated is the ease of use of this device. It is insane and it's easy to explain. Watch this, simply press one of these buttons here to select a parameter you wanna control and then use one knob to control it. That's it. I think every audio interface in the game could take a lesson from the Evo 4 when it comes to intuitive user interface and usability. I mean, you've got your 48 volt phantom power here, inputs one and two, smart gain, which allows you to automatically adjust the gain level, okay, so you're not peaking or coming in too low. It does that on its own. Uh, you've got your speaker control and your mix control all controlled from one knob after pressing and selecting one of these buttons. This device takes a ton of the guesswork out of using professional audio equipment for those of us who are just gamers or musicians who don't really get into the technical side of all of this gear and equipment. It's got multiple imports so you're flexible no matter where you go. It's got a sturdy rugged design. I've used this for over a month now and it has held up remarkably well even to the point of barely having any scratches on it whatsoever. None that I can discern. Certainly that matte black finish helps uh, cover a lot of that as well. USB-C, so it's forward thinking. You've got your basic two stereo outs, and man, I mean, what more could you want for something that is easy to fit in a bag, can go with you anywhere, is flexible as far as inputs and outputs, usable, super quick and intuitive as far as the interface, and of course it comes with all of the free software that its bigger cousin, the ID4, comes with. So hopefully with this rundown, I've painted an accurate picture of who this device is for. And if that's you, you don't need to watch any further. Go ahead and pick up an Evo 4 from Audient today. But from there, I want to get into the big boy, the big cousin of the Evo 4, the Audient ID4 Mark II. So this is the second iteration of this device. And man, oh man, I love it. So let me get some biases out of the way. First of all, I'm a sucker for aesthetics and build quality. So it already had my heart over the Evo 4 in that department with the full metal jacket, metal on the back, front, top, sides, you name it, the knobs. The only place you're really gonna find plastic on this are on the uh, speaker button, the ID button, and your phantom power button, which is located on the back. Um, personally, I've used this as my daily driver even since the big competition in which I put the Evo 4 against the ID 4, as well as the Scarlet, uh, solo third generation and the M Audio 1924, their air series of audio interfaces. And that's been for one primary reason, and that is sound quality. So it's a desktop suited interface, and I mostly record here in the studio. So a desktop interface is perfectly fine for me, and I want the top quality that I can get 
in this price range. But don't take that the wrong way as the ID4 Mark II does compete in higher price brackets um, than it is in. So not only are you getting the full metal jacket, all that free software, but you are also getting sound quality that can match devices probably I would say twice its price. So going over some of the buttons and switches, as this is fairly more complicated than something like the Evo 4, you've got your multifunction volume knob, you've got your balance knob between your input, which is like your microphone or your instrument, and your DAW, which is your computer, and you've got your two gain knobs for your microphone as well as your instrument in. You've also got your speaker button and your ID button, which is also multifunction, which is great. On the back here, you've got your stereo outs for your speakers, as well as your phantom power button. This turns your phantom power on and off, as well as a combo XLR TRS input jack. And of course, it's a USB-C interface, just like the Evo 4. You've got a Kensington lock on this side. And on the front, we have two headphone inputs. So this is for your quarter inch or your 3.5 millimeter uh, headphone input. Um, and then here, obviously, your input for your instrument. Now, I want to make a pit stop at mobility because I did mention that the Evo 4 was more mobile friendly, uh, but that's mostly due to its size and its weight. This is heavier and fairly more awkward shaped. But when it comes to the build of it, the build materials, metal is virtually, it's much stronger than plastic is, and there's no bending, no creaking of this device whatsoever at all. So would I feel comfortable throwing this in a bag? Yes, but I wouldn't want to because metal does scratch and you know, I don't want my knobs to get all dinged up. This is a very pretty interface and something in me does not want to take it on the go. It sits nicely on my desktop and it just feels like a million bucks when you're using it. What can I say? So yes, while this is mobile, I wouldn't say it's mobile friendly due to its size, weight, and it's just too pretty. One feature of the ID4 Mark II that is not even present on the Evo 4 is we get a actual meter to tell us what input signal we're coming in, as well as what's coming out of our speakers as far as decibels. That is absent from the Evo 4, so it's really just, does it sound right? And of course, with features like Smart Gain here, you can be pretty confident that you're coming in at the right levels. Given that you give an accurate performance, this thing is going to put you in at the right levels every time. So no need to worry about that as far as input meters but I still, as a professional, I do like having this meter so I can know what range I'm coming in between, not just that I'm not spiking or coming in too low. I want to I wanna pinpoint that. But yeah, the preamps are great. The DACs are great. The sound quality is just fantastic. It's much better than anything from that $100 to $200 range. It is noticeable. Um, I record on a Stellar X2 for my tests because it's a fairly easy to access microphone that's got a great sound quality. So hopefully with that rundown, I painted a better picture of who this device is for. And yeah, if that's you, you can go ahead and pick up an ID4 Mark II. Um, so depending on who you are, one of these devices is going to suit your needs better. Are you gonna go with quick mobility with flexible inputs and outputs and intuitive user interface? Or are you gonna go with a more stationary, sturdy, bet good build? I don't wanna give you guys the finger. Better build quality device, which has sound quality that is just in, a, in another league. My friends, that is the decision that I cannot help you with, but I will put affiliate links to both of these devices down in the description. If this video was helpful, if it helped you get your mind wrapped around who these devices are for. So if you want to help out the channel, that's a great way to do it. Um, I also did a matchup putting these devices against the Scarlett Solo third generation and the M Audio Air 1924 interface. So if you want to see these go head to head with those interfaces in a big award show style smackdown, I'll leave a link to that down below and somewhere here on the screen to check out. Keep it locked here for more pro audio videos, Apple videos, all kinds of tech and video games, high quality stuff I try to make for you guys. Like like, subscribe and click bells and share this with your friends so we can grow this community and learn more together. It's the Granite Geek Show.